In this course, we'll be building a 2D engine basically from scratch in C. By the end of the course, you will have created something akin to what's on the screen now, complete with a custom physics engine, rendering pipeline, animation system, and sound effects. Using a minimal amount of libraries, I'll walk you through how to create each engine module and why, as well as discuss possible modifications and considerations. If you're interested, triple smash that like button and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when each new chapter is released. There is a certain amount of required knowledge that I won't be covering in depth. Basic understanding of C and OpenGL are useful to fully understand this course. In this chapter, as is tradition, we'll be starting with an environment setup. I'll just be showing how to install what we need on Windows. If you're on Linux or Mac OS, then you can just use a package manager. And why Windows? Because, like it or not, it's still got the gaming market share by a massive margin. So you probably need to test your games on Windows anyway. To build with debug symbols for Windows, we'll need to use the build tools for Visual Studio. You can download that from the Visual Studio downloads page. Once you have the installer, just make sure to tick the desktop development box and that'll give you what you need. Now that could take a while to install if you don't have it already. So while that's happening, we can go and grab some of the other required libraries. I've created a fake drive that separates this work environment from all of my other files. This is optional and can be done with the subst command as shown on the screen now. Now inside this work drive, we'll need three directories. One for the project and one include and one lib directory. First library on the list is SDL2. We'll just be using this to create a window and an OpenGL context and also for some timing functions. Next on the list is SDL2 Mixer, a plugin for SDL2 that will enable us to play audio. We'll also grab FreeType2. That will help us tremendously with text rendering. And lastly, we'll need some kind of OpenGL loader, in this case, GLAD. So head over to glad.david with an i.de, select uh, GL version 3.3 .3 on the left, and core as the profile. Leave everything else the same. Unless you want to set it up a different way, then just follow my lead on screen to get all the files set up in the places that will work. Now we've got that out of the way, we'll need to create some scripts. We'll be using Windows for this series, so the scripts will be dead simple and they'll be written in batch files. We'll create two in the project's root directory now, build.bat and clean.bat. For the build script, we'll keep it dead simple. We'll set a couple of variables at the top. The first is files. That'll just be a list of all the C files in our project. The second is libs. That's whatever libraries we need to link against. And last up is the build line. I'll go through each section. CL is a tool that controls the Microsoft compiler and linker. Slash ZI will give us the debug symbols. Slash I, followed by our include directory, will tell the compiler where the header files can be found. Percent files percent just expands what we set the files variable to. Slash link will link the following libraries, which will just be the expanded form of our libs variable. Finally, slash out, followed by a colon and then some kind of name, is just setting the executable name. By default, it'd be the name of the first C file, in this case, glad.exe. Now let's set up our main.c file in the source directory. We'll just include uh, scdio so we can print something to the terminal. Then we'll fill out the main function as such. Pretty standard stuff. Now, assuming that your Visual Studio tools are finished installing, you should have access to this uh, x64 native tools command prompt. We need to run that to run CL. Open that up and navigate to the project directory. Once inside, just type uh, build and and my game and hit enter. And you should see that it's all working. Now, if you take a look at the directory, you'll see there's a bunch of extra files in there. These are used by the compiler or debugger to do various things. But sometimes you'll just want to clean them out. So let's make a quick script for that. Open clean.bat, type uh, del as the command, and then we'll follow with a list of things that we want to remove from the current directory. So dot followed by backslash means the current directory in Windows. The star will just match any character or any or a series of any character. 
And then we'll just add the extension that we want to remove. So .ilk, .obj, .pdb, and .exe. There we go. And now we head back to the terminal, type clean and hit enter. Now if you type PIR to list the files, you should have a clean directory. Setup for the environment is now done. And we can move on to creating our OpenGL context and opening a window. Heading back into main.c, we'll include some header files std bool, glad, and sdl. Now, as we've supplied our own main function, we'll define a macro here to tell sdl to use it. In the main function, let's start with supplying sdl the parameters for OpenGL. First up is the profile type. We chose core, then we'll just supply the major and minor versions, which are both three. Now we'll initialize sdl. If we don't get the expected result, just print the error and exit from the program. Next up, we'll need a pointer to an sdl window. The first parameter is the window title. Next couple are the position. We'll use the macro provided by SDL to center the window. After that is width and height. And then finally, what flags the window has. In our case, we'll just have one flag telling SDL we want to use OpenGL. If that failed for some reason, we'll print an error and exit. Now we'll create the OpenGL context. We need to use a function from GLAD combined with a couple from SDL. Glad basically loads all the pointers into the right places in memory so we can use them. Once again, if that fails, we'll print an error and exit. Assuming success, we'll print out some info to the terminal. If we run this now, we should see that everything is working. Great. Now that we have OpenGL loaded, we can run a loop to keep our window open. Create this uh, should quit variable and set it to false. Now, while this variable is false, we'll continue looping. Let's see what happens with an empty loop. As you can see, the program hangs and pressing the close button doesn't work. That's because we need to handle events such as the quit event coming from the operating system. To get events from SDL, we'll use this poll event function inside another while loop. We'll just have one case here, polling for the quit event. When we get that event type, we'll set should quit to true and that should exit the loop.